Hey everybody, this is David from the Legacy team and from the Cosmetic Standardization Project Backroom here to show you how to use the CS project, essentially. So my assumption is that you've already extracted the contents of the download to a folder, and that is what I have done here. It will look something like this, and we will begin with that assumption. Now before I go on, I should say that this video will probably be divided into sections, so I would recommend scrolling to the description, figuring out which section is pertinent to you, and then watching that section. So to begin, we're going to do a very, very basic recolor. We'll do, um, we'll focus on stocks and how you do those, and then we're going to go into something a little bit more advanced, but not too advanced, so don't worry. All right, so... We're starting with uh, wanting to render Mario. So the one that I'm going to begin with is some of Moe's amazing recolors. And by the way, if you are not a fan of his recolors, it's simply probably because you don't know they exist. They are fantastic. So I will basically be rendering this uh, Ice Mario, uh, which you can see here. So this is the process. Uh, you'll note that I have this in a downloads folder called Video Demo, aptly named. I'm going to try to like scroll past all the weird download folder names you're going to see. But anyways, all right. So what you're going to want to do is confirm this is the right costume, and it is. There he is. And then the first texture data, you're going to want to open it and kind of look around and make sure it's what you're expecting. And yes, these are the character's costume textures. So that's what I want to export. So you're going to right-click this texture data, usually just the first one called texture data 1. You're going to select this export all option, not export without all you need to do export all and then i'm going to go to where my cs project is downloaded which you see i have a lot of tests going on here uh let's see video demo all right so now i'm going to go to scenes uh scenes models and textures is the name of the folder then i will go to mario and Mario Standard, and then Model and Textures. So this is the reason I did this, just to recap what I did. This is a Mario recolor. It is base Mario. It's not the alt of Mario, which is Dr. Mario. It is simply standard Mario. And I'm not exporting it to this folder. I'm specifically exporting it to the Model and Textures folder here. Okay, so now what I've just done is I basically replaced all of Mario's textures with these new ones before I even opened any files yet. So now under Scenes, Models, and Textures, I'm going to go to Mario Standard and open this .blend file. Now this is also assuming you've installed Blender already, and you have GIMP installed already. So I might make a video on that, but for now I'm going to assume that you have those installed. Alrighty. So as expected, in this scene, we have the new textures over Mario, which is pretty great. So all you have to do is click Render, and click Render Image and the assets are being rendered right now. So we're not gonna have this all on video. I'll probably skip to after this for the sake of the video. All right, so now we have both rendered. Uh, first off, I want you to note up here that there are two render layers. There is a render render layer and there is a stock render layer. And this determines what gets rendered basically and, and this is a very complex program with a lot of things you can do, but for the sake of this, I'm going to focus on just the core things you should worry about. All right, so down here, you on this dropdown, you want to make triple sure this says composite right here. If this says composite, click image and click save as. And I am going to go to renders and cosmetics. In this, Notice I'm in the same folder where the rest of the CS project is. I'm going to find Mario... It was right here, and I'm going to just find the latest number and then name it the one after that. So this is Mario Standard 5. I'm going to call this Mario Standard 6 to just kind of follow the naming convention that's there. All right, the next thing you want to do, you're not done yet because you have to do the stock, is see this button here next to Render Result. You're going to want to click Viewer Node, and that's going to give you the image for the stock. So I'm going to hit Save As. I'm going to go to Stock Heads, which is a folder within the Mario Standard folder, and type... Mario Standard 6. This is the stock again. Save. All right, so now the assets are saved out. So let's go through here and see that they're saved. I'm going to go to the root of the CS project. I'm going to go to renders and cosmetics. I'm going to go to Mario. And uh, looks like his render is here. 
check it out. So now a great way to test to see if it matches with the other ones is to use the arrow keys, go back and forth between the two. So ignore the fact that one has a black background for some reason. But if you look between the two, they are pretty synced up. They are very, like, beautiful. They're just beautiful. All right. Um, so then you can go to stock heads and do the same thing. Here's one of the uh, default ones and here's the new one. And they line up just perfectly. Very, very nice. Um, so that's exactly what we wanted. So that's how you render assets for that. Uh, now I will show you next how to generate assets, but before I do that, I'm gonna demonstrate Dr. Mario, all right. Um, and just by the way, actually before I do that, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. I'm gonna show you how what it looks like to render another one in succession. So I just switched back to the 3D view so I can kind of look around here. Let's say I wanted to render Moe's Waluigi color also. So there's a Waluigi Mario and it looks like this, all right. Let's say I wanted to render this. What I would do is I would repeat the process that I did before. I would open this, make sure it's the right costume. There it is. I'm gonna open this and say, yep, these are all the right textures and export to the same location. We got downloads, we've got this, and we've got scenes, Mario, Mario standard, and model and textures. Click OK and click OK. So you'll notice this hasn't updated right away and that's because basically you have to refresh Blender and to do that, what I like to do is click file, open recent, and pick the same one that you already have opened, which is this one. And if I click this, it updates the texture. So there you go. So that's what I would do if I wanted to continually render new costumes. It's really that easy, all right? So now before I render, I actually create CSPs and stocks and BPs, I'm gonna show you a different character. And the reason I'm doing that is because with Dr. Mario, you actually have to customize um, his stocks, all right? And I'll show you what I mean by that in a bit. So the process you should be doing when you're thinking about rendering something um, is uh, first you open the scenes folder. So in this case, I'm gonna go to Mario. I'm gonna go to Dr. Mario because that's what I wanna render. And if you open this model and textures folder, you're going to see textures in here, and you're also gonna see some XCF files, and these are GIMP templates. So if you find an XCF, or several in this case, in a folder, it is generally a good idea to open them, and I will show you why. Because essentially, these are what you'll be using to make the stock-specific textures uh, for your render. So I'm gonna open both of them. So I open this, this mirror belt stock one, I'm gonna open this uh, mirror one. Okay, so as you can see here, we have some carefully labeled layers on the right here. And uh, in case you can't see this, by the way, you'll wanna click Windows under Dockable Dialogs and make sure that layers is visible. Mine happens to be because I've set it up this way. All right, um, so in this case, you'll want to be mindful that when you do a recolor of Dr. Mario, you'll want to also make special versions of these, okay? So with that, I'm going to render a Dr. Mario recolor. So I'm gonna check here. Dr. Mario recolors by Mo, good option. Let's go to, see which one do I wanna recolor? Okay, so I kinda of like this brown one. So I'm gonna do this brown uh, one here. So let's go to the brown one. You, you'll notice Mo has labeled them pretty meticulously. And lo and behold, this is the brown Dr. Mario. And lo and behold, in this first texture data, you have his correct textures. That is good. So I'm going to export all. I'm going to go to that same location where my CS project files are housed. Mario, Dr. Mario, seeds, or models, and textures. Okay, okay. So now I'm going to open that. So I'm gonna to go to Dr. Mario, Dr. Mario, PM. And here we are, here, are, here is our model that we want to render with the correct textures, which is great. So I'm going to click render and do the same thing. Actually, before I do that, right, um, I want you to notice what we did for Dr. Mario's uh, stocks. So I'm going to go to renders and cosmetics, I'm going to go to Mario and stock heads. Okay, so first off, notice that for standard Mario, 
his stock looks the same as his main render. And that's because the color of his hat is the identifier of what costume that he is. But in the case of Dr. Mario, you have to be more distinct. So this one looks normal. But this one is actually not true to how the costume actually looks. But you can tell that this is the, uh, the black costume for Dr. Mario because of the headband. And same with the red costume and the green and the blue. And the reason why that we do that is because if you look in game, you'll notice that there are deviations from the actual design of the costume that assist you with understanding which costume it is. So in this case, I'm going to do something. Uh, I actually get a little shortcut here since the main uh, band is already brown and I'm doing a brown uh, Dr. Mario. I'm only going to color this uh, disc brown and I will show you how to do that. And to level with you, I am a Photoshop user, so I'm a little bit out of my element right now. Um, but we should make this, we should have made this accessible enough so any uh, moron like me can figure it out. So let's let's put that to the test right now. I'm just going to duplicate the layer. I'm going to make it visible. And we have kind of this blue overlay, which is used for a different costume. And I'm going to pick a color that's brown and say that's pretty brown. Actually, we're getting kind of orangey. Let's do brown like that. Okay. And I'm going to just try the paint bucket and see if it works. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. That looks like it works. So basically, I duplicated an existing layer, and then I just colored it differently. And by and large, that's what you'll be doing. There's some exceptions, but mostly that's really what it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File Export. Here are all of the files. Just to give you context, we're in the Scenes and, and Textures and Models folder. We're in the Mario, we're in the Dr. Mario, and we're in the Model and Textures folder. And you'll notice there's already a, there's already a file in here called Fit Dr. Mario Mirror Stocks. If the word has stocks in it, that means it's stock specific and it's not normally in the pack. And I'm going to just click Export because it's already named the right thing. It says, do you want to replace it? And I definitely want to replace it. So now... If I do my tip that I showed you earlier, where I go to open recent and go to this option to refresh it, this should no longer be silver and it should be brown. Let's see if it worked. Ah, it did not work. That's because I forgot to mention something. Um, uh, the stock layer is hidden by default. So we're gonna just click render and see if it shows up. And you'll see what I mean in a second. And by the way, it's absolutely no mistake that these, pot that these models look so good. This was an effort of TripTech. He polished every single Blender scene so that these characters look really polished and smooth. And um, they just look phenomenal. They've never looked better. So huge shout out to TripTech for, for pouring so many hours into this and making it look so good. Um, it really, really paid off. All right, we're finished. So I'm noting that it's on composite. So I'm gonna go ahead and save as this image. And I'm gonna call this Dr. Mario PM6. Actually, we're in stockhead, so let me back out here real fast. All right, we're in the correct one. We're in the parent folder. And we wanna call this Mario Dr. PM6. So save that. We're going to click this icon and go to viewer node and we're getting just the stock including this brown texture which we wanted we're going to save that as also six under the stock heads folder now let's look at things and make sure everything looks the way we expect it to nice and can nice and cohesive all right so here's our new six one this is our stock here's an existing pm one and here's our new one and if uh windows explorer gets its act together keeps like fading out on me here, but really you can see that they're really, really lined up like perfectly, which is perfect. All right, now we have the main render. Here is a Project M costume and here is Mo's recolor and they line up perfectly. Wonderful. So you have just now learned how to render assets. Now we've made these things called crops and masks and we'll be using these in just a second to generate the cosmetic assets, all right? Um, but let's assume that you've rendered out a ton of these costumes and here are all your renders. Okay. And you have all these stock head renders also, and you want to make assets from them. Well, how do you do that? I will show you. TripTech has developed some add-ons for GIMP. I'm going to, I'm going to close these by the way. 
and essentially they they automate the process of creating assets there's no, there's never been and there's never been anything like this made before for the brawl modding community so this is really exciting so um uh we have a pre like we have a version of gimp that comes with it that's packaged with our project so your gimp might look slightly different than this but the general principle is the same if you click tools and you go down to um uh, asset cropper that's the first one you're going to want to use all right, so the first step is to go to your input image folder. In this case, think about it. We just rendered Mario costumes. All right, so uh, I'm going to go to my downloads uh, video demo. Sorry this is taking so long. It's it's a little, I'm being a little clumsy here. Um, okay, so I'm going to the renders. So renders, going to Mario. And this is the correct folder. So basically on the input image folder, you are picking where your renders are. And then output can really be anywhere. So um, I'm going to, I'm going to pick, I'm gonna to go to the renders and cosmetics, I'm gonna to go to the renders and cosmetics folder. I'm going to go to Mario. And then I'm gonna to go to, um, I'll make a new one called export. You can, again, do this really wherever you want. So now I have a folder called export, all right? And now this is where it's asking you for a BP crop file and a CSP crop file. And that's what I was showing you a bit earlier. If you go to crops and masks, you'll see these files. So for the BP crop, you wanna pick obviously the BP crop PNG. And for the CSP crop, you'll wanna pick the CSP crop PNG. And if you want to do HDSS for Dolphin, you want to hit yes. If you don't care, you can click no, but I like having it, leaving it on yes. So now let's click OK and see if all of our assets are being created. So when you click OK, it's going to go through every single render that you've made. And it's going for, this is not for stocks yet, by the way. This is just for CSPs and BPs. And it's basically generating all these assets right now. There are probably, I don't know, 12 different renders in there. OK, so it has finished. So now let's go to, um, let's see here. Let's go to our new folder and it should be called export. And here it is. And lo and behold, look at this. All the renders have been created. One in native resolution, one in HD for Dolphin. So let's take a look at that. So check this out. So all these cosmetics have been rendered just in that quick step. So, <laughs> Anything you render is gonna be perfectly aligned and and working with the other ones. It's just what's so exciting about this. Notice that the, here are the ones that I rendered earlier. And they're right alongside the default ones. And uh, in Legacy TE 2.0, we actually used the very method that you're watching to generate the assets for the build. So you're it's gonna be completely seamless when you add your custom costumes to the build. All right, that's that. Um, I think the next thing that I'll cover will be like a uh, a like net new costume. And this gets a little tricky, uh, a little bit more advanced. So I think for most users, this will satisfy their questions and what they need to know uh, about this project. And it will um, hopefully be good for most of you. But the next part is going to be around, uh, you know, unique models. So I'll give you an example of what a unique model might be. So I'm going to search on the vault for Vacation Mario. All right. Vacation Mario by Dr. Dean. This is basically the Sunshine Mario outfit. And uh, let's say I want to uh, I want to use this costume. That's it. All right. So you'll notice a few things about this Mario. From a model perspective, he basically appears to be standard Mario, but with some sunglasses and a coat on. Okay. That's essentially what it looks like here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pose this character in the same pose as the Mario uh, in every other render. And then I'm going to import the glasses and the coat over the existing standard Mario. And again, this is more advanced, but if you could follow along, you can probably figure it out too. All right. So to get started, I am going to go through the objects here. So you're opening Brawl Box, right? You're gonna go through here and you're going to delete anything you don't need. Some examples of things you don't need are wherever it says eye yellow. And typically these will be invisible in Brawl Box. So I'm just 
holding control and delete and I'm hitting enter a lot to get rid of these. You also don't need damage face eyes, anything you won't be rendering. So this mean face, I'm not sure what that is. So you'll want this because this is the default Mario face. I think these are just placeholders because he wears sunglasses and you can't see his eyes anyway, so I'll leave that there. You're also not rendering his actual hair because he is wearing a hat. So we will also delete the hair. No, we won't optimize it, we will delete it. Okay, so now let's view Mario and this looks way better. So we got rid of his extra face, we got rid of his extra hair and stuff. This is just the model we're going to be rendering. Anybody that's watched my tutorial with 3ds Max will be somewhat familiar with this part. All right, so we have this costume and I'm going to turn off vertices. At this point, you need to have a basic understanding of Brawlbox, but not too bad. All right, so I basically open this panel to the left and open this animation panel. I'm gonna click load and I'm gonna to go to our installation of CS project and I'm gonna go to poses. Now I'm gonna go to Mario and we have a few options here. We have Mario TE pose, Dr. Mario TE pose and Dr. Mario pill TE pose. The reason why these all exist is this is basically the one you're gonna use 99% of the time. For Dr. Mario, we have to make a few specific tweaks because in Mario's pose, he grabs his hat and Dr. Mario doesn't have the same kind of build hat. So I just, we basically decided on a slightly different pose for Dr. Mario. So by and large, you're gonna to wanna to use the standard one unless it has some special fancy title that pertains to this costume and in this case it doesn't. All right, so now we have this new one we've animated or we've imported rather and I'm gonna click it and look at that. He is automatically transforming into the pose uh, that uh, he's transforming into the pose that he's in the, in the render. So once he's in that pose, make sure it's active. Go to transform all and click copy. Click off of it so that this is not being highlighted and then click paste. And now if you close this previewer, you'll notice that he is fixed in this position. He is He's basically, this is his new T pose. This is the model's new default position. So I'm going to export this and I'm going to export it in scenes. I'm going to go to Mario. I'm actually going to copy Mario standard. Okay. And I'm going to call this one Mario Sunshine. Oh, EX. That's the term. That's right. So EX just means it's not in TE. It's not in PM. It's just something extra that you want to put in. So I'm going to go to model and textures and I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to save over this because why not? So you want to export as DAE. I'm going to overwrite this one because it's basically the old Mario, which is whatever. It's fine. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to right click export all textures. I'm going to go to uh, downloads, going to find my where my CS project files are again. And I'm going to go to scenes. I'm going to go to Mario and find that new folder that I just made, which is Mario Sunshine EX. I'm going to go to model and textures, click OK and click OK. All right. So now I'm going to go back to CS project, which is right here. Go to scenes, go to Mario, go to Sunshine EX and open this blend. Now what you're gonna find when you open it is it might be kind of odd because you have the normal Mario like model and you're gonna have textures from, um, yeah, okay. So it looks a little weird just as I expected because it's taking the textures that you exported from the Sunshine Mario here and it's trying to apply them to the normal Mario. So let's actually import this model and I'll show you how that what that looks like. Uh, one more thing too that you'll notice with this is every every single scene has this uh, scene details txt and this gives you things like where the eyes are located and then uh, and then the model scale and stuff like that and, and model rotation if any. All right. So uh, so this is useful because this tells us the model scale. So, and I'll show you why that's important in just a second. The eye stuff won't matter because he's wearing glasses, all right? So this makes it a little bit more simple. So what I want to do is click File, Import, DAE. And we're going to go to basically where we exported it earlier. Uh, let's see. Let's go to Scenes. Let's go to Mario. Let's go to Sunshine EX. And let's open that DAE that we just exported. Now it looks really tiny, it's down there, and that's where the scaling comes in. So make sure this armature is selected, whatever the latest one is, because that's the newest model. Make sure that you're on object. You could be on all these tabs, so make sure you're on the object one. And see where it says scale? Increase that to whatever the scene uh, details say. In this case, you want to include the X, Y, and the Z values, 2.2. All right, so now you have some overlapping models. 
And what's great is you can already see that the glasses are fitting into place and that his coat is f sort of fitting into place, all right? And that's because it's uh, a lot of the, mar the models here are redundant with the default ones. So I'm actually gonna open this, expand this armature. I'm gonna toggle visibility of certain elements, ones I don't need, and then delete them. So I don't need this pair of pants, he already has it. Let's see, I don't need this hair because he already has hair. I don't need this. I don't need this face because he already has a face. I don't need this because he already has shoes and and you know and, and gloves and all that. Uh, let's see. I don't know what these are. Okay, this is his, another one of his faces, I guess. Shades. Okay, so this is where I'm gonna obviously keep the shades because they're important for the costume. And then shirt. So you can see shades and shirt are the new ones, and I can pretty much get rid of everything else because there are things like his hat and his eyes, which I already all have. Delete. Okay, so now we're talking. This is, looks a lot more like the uh, the costume we are trying to render. And what's great is all the work that Triptech did to polish the model has already been done. So right now, these uh, sunglasses and the coat don't look great, but they're definitely something. And, uh, and we'll eventually, hopefully, get to tutorials that are more advanced, even more advanced than this, and like go into how to polish... Um, how to polish these uh, models to get them to look even better. But for now, we won't go that we won't go that route. We'll just stick to the basics. Okay. So, um, let me think about this. How do I should go next? All right. So now we won't need to start applying the textures to these models because right now they're just white and they're plain and they don't have any textures attached to them. So I'm going to start with the sunglasses. I'm going to right click the sunglasses and they are now active. I'm going to click this, which is material. I'm going to click use nodes over here. Stuff's going to appear under this color, but there's a button right here. Click that and you're going to hover over to image texture and now it's going to be a color. And then over here, you're going to want to click open under image texture and then um, go to Sunshine EX, go to where you exported the, the textures earlier. I like changing it to a visual mode and I'm thinking, okay, there's sunglasses. So I'm sure this is it. So shades is probably the right one. And lo and behold, it is. So we have the correct texture on the right model, which is all great news. So next is his coat. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna right click his coat. I'm going to click uh, use nodes because we're already on the material tab here. I'm gonna click this color button. I'm gonna click image texture. I'm gonna click open. And uh, now this is clearly a shirt. So I'm gonna click this and voila, here we go. Now notice that this looks pretty bad. Um, Something you'll take for granted, well, maybe not, but peep, something that people may overlook is that the degree to which we really polished up the model so they played well with the textures, because you have to remember, Brawl's a pretty old game now, and it uses pretty low-res textures, and this looks pretty bad. But the good news for you is that in Wii, especially on native resolution, you will not really be able to tell. Another thing you'll notice is that his shirt is clipping into his face. And uh, again, we'll cover how to fix that in a bit. Um, basically you can go to edit mode and you can like basically go in and edit and like move polygons around and polish them and stuff. But again, that's kind of outside of the scope of this tutorial. So I'm not going to go into that for now. We're going to say you're okay with this clipping and that doesn't bother you. Okay. So with that being said, what do we need to render? Well, we need to render the, um, the full render, obviously, and then we also need to render the stock head because we need a little Mario with sunglasses on to show the stock that this is Sunshine Mario. All right. Uh, oh, I just realized something really silly. I didn't show how to export stocks yet. So that was a silly miss of mine. Anyways, we'll get to that in a second. Um, okay. So there's a few things that we have to do. And this is where it gets a little more complicated, but not bad. So for the shades, we need the shades to appear both on the stock and on the main render, right? So this is where you get to figuring out layers. So if you click this, um, this, uh, this object tab here, you'll see which layers this object uh, occupies. So if you, and that's important. So this one, this one's all three layers. So if you click this right here, this is render layers. And this says on render, it renders anything from these three layers on, in a scene. But stock excludes the first one. All right. So shades are actually in a good spot because they're going to get rendered both in both places. 
But this shirt, we definitely don't want the shirt being rendered along with the hat because you don't want a shirt with a stock, all right? So let's look here. It looks like um, it's in three renders too, in three layers, I mean. So I'm only gonna click this to only render on the first one. And the reason that I'm doing that is because over here on the render layers, it says on stock, it excludes this, which is exactly what I want. So as a point of comparison, let's say his shoes, right? You don't want his shoes to be rendered either in the stock. So let's see, it looks like it's on the first layer, which makes complete sense because in the stock scene that is excluded. So if that went over your head, I'm sorry. I would recommend playing this video back a few times until you get it, but it's not that bad and it actually makes complete sense. So if I click render, what should happen is this should be totally rendered, which is great. And then when it renders the stock, it should do just the head and just the sunglasses. Let's see what happens. All right, so real quick, I'm gonna save this because you should be saving regularly. That's just a good practice in general. And I'm gonna save this asset out. I'm gonna to go to File, Save As. I'm gonna find Renders and Cosmetics. I'm gonna find Mario. All right, now here's the more visual guide. You'll notice we have Dr. Mario, we have Mario Standard, but we have nothing for Vacation Mario. I'm gonna call him Sunshine Mario. So I'm gonna call, uh, let's see here. I'm gonna call, whoa, what on earth? No, stop. All right, let's try that again. File, we're on composite, so let's go to File, Save As. Go back to renders and cosmetics. Let's go to Mario. Let's go here. Um, I'm gonna call this Mario Sunshine EX One dot PNG, and then I'm gonna to go to Viewer Node, and I'm gonna save the stock head version. I'm gonna to go to stock heads and call it the same thing: Mario Sunshine EX underscore One. EX is just what I use to differentiate what's in TE versus PM versus what I'm adding. But you can you really use whatever you want, whatever makes the most sense to you. Okay, now let's verify that our cosmetics match up with the other ones like we did for the previous. All right, let's go to, oh, by the way, Blender creates a blend one file, like kind of as a backup. I kind of ignore it. I just always open the blend ones, just so you know. So let's go to renders and cosmetics. Let's go to Mario. Let's go and see how this lines up with the other one. So we're gonna make this full screen and check it out. It lines up pretty perfectly with our other cosmetic, which is exactly what we wanted. So that's perfect. Let's try the stock out. And that looks solid, look at that. That's fantastic. Well, that's exactly what we wanted. All right, one more note before I move on to stocks. If, let's say your costume is a bit bulkier than uh, than the default one or the one that you're doing it over. All right, I'm gonna do a really bad example here. So let's say his sleeve goes way out like that and obviously it wouldn't, but for the sake of the argument, let's say that it does, all right? You'll notice that there's this kind of red grid in this top left corner, and this is defining what is being rendered. So if I render this right now, all right, I'm gonna stop it there, but you can basically see that it's gonna be cut off in the render. So the way you change this window is you use Shift B and you get this kind of crosshair looking thing and you can kind of redefine what's being rendered. And we've pretty much optimized it for performance and that's why you've kind of kept it like this. But if you need to adjust it to your own size, you can easily do that. So I'm gonna click, I'll click here and here probably. I'll click and drag and make sure that's around what can capture everything. So now if I render again, it's gonna capture everything. I'll show you. All right. So as you can see here, what's this, I mean, this looks ridiculous obviously, but you'll notice I was able to extend the window and, and ever get capture everything, but it's still in the same location. So it'll still line up with the other cosmetics, which is really great. So uh, just to make a distinction, the, the, the red dotted line is like where is like what's being rendered and then this larger one is sort of the um, the main canvas. You never want to move this because that will mess up all the cosmetics and nothing will be aligned and all that. All right, so with all of that out of the way, let's go to the stocks and I will show you how those work. We're going to go back to... Um, actually, you know what? We can even use our new uh, Sunshine one, which will be fun. All right. So let's go to Tools and let's go to Stock Processor Batch. All right, so what you're gonna do, like before, you're gonna define an input and output, but this time, for the input, I'm going to go to, um, am I on the right one here? Yeah, I am, okay. So if you go to uh, Renders and Cosmetics, you go to Mario. 
instead of picking this folder, we're actually going to go to the stock heads folder because that's what we're, we're making stocks out of the stock heads. And I'm going to go to um, run the mix. I'm going to make a folder within stock heads called export. Again, you can do whatever you want. But that's kind of what I'm going to do. And then there's a stock mask file and a stock crop file. Some characters do not have a stock uh, mask file. So if that's the case, I'll show you what to do. Go to crops and masks. And it appears that Mario does not have a mask. So just use the crop file for both. The stock crop for both. All right. So let's go do crops and masks. Let's go to stock crop for both. And again, some characters will have a mask. And if they do, you need to put it there. So first we're going to render the standard stock icons and then we're going to do the HD ones. I'm just click OK. It's going to go through the whole thing here. Oh, oh, I, I just broke my own rule. Okay, this is very important. And I can't believe that I missed this. So here, um, you need to make sure this is set to paintbrush. This is absolutely imperative that you pick paintbrush. I completely ignored these important instructions. So I'm going to go back and do it again because I didn't have paintbrush selected. So to show you how it looks wrong, these are how they look, which isn't from a glance. It might not seem wrong, but it is. So make sure you have paintbrush selected first, then click OK. OK. Now, let's see. OK, that looks better. That's exactly how it should look. Now we're going to make the HD ones, and you're going to see what they look like in more detail that way. So I'm going to click HD, click OK. And uh, standard stocks in native resolution are 32 by 32, and HD ones are just four times of that for Dolphin, which is 128 by 128. So let's check this out. So check this out. You have these awesome stocks based on the stock heads with that black border around them. And here's this, here's the Sunshine one that we made, and here's the Dr. Mario that we one that we made, and here's the Mario standard one that we made. So there you have it. You have just witnessed the uh the reader's digest version of the CS project, the value it brings to you, the automation it brings to you, how you can render recolors, how you make sense of the stocks and stock specific textures, and then also a net new model like the sunshine one and just to kind of recap how you did the sunshine one again essentially what we did was we took advantage of existing scenes which was the normal mario one right looked like well ignoring the weird discolor here essentially we took this normal mario we were able to import the new model to add the glasses and the shirt and we were able to call it a day and for most users, that should be enough. If the character changes too much, um, there's always exceptions, obviously. Uh, I would just say that's kind of a skill learning curve, and I invite you to learn more about it. But we've given you everything you should ever need uh, in this pack. Um, notice you have all the poses for all the characters, so you can basically take any brawl box model and pose it the way that is posed for everyone else you have all these resources to like crop things properly in fact we even have under gimp we have uh templates for hd eyes for kirby and jigglypuff which is pretty cool along with some instructions that uh, metal legacy put together which are really great um let's see here um oh yeah and then these are some mask templates so if you're ever making your own poses and your own renders and you need to do your own masks for crops everything is here for that also so here's an example. Um, oh yeah, and this won't really make sense outside of context, but there's a whole tutorial on how to do HDIs for Jigglypuff and for Kirby. And just for fun, I'll show you what some of those look like because they look pretty awesome. So under, actually, I'm under Renders Cosmetics. Let's go under Scenes, Kirby. Okay, so here, notice this is the in-game one. Nope, that's an HD one. Wait, now I'm confused. Yeah, basically, they look fantastic. Here is an HD one, and Brawl would never render textures this big, but on a character like Kirby, where his eyes are so prominent and part of the costume, it really looks bad when they're low res. So we, if you want, you can still render with the normal ones, um, but 
we've provided those to you also. Anyway, I hope you've gotten a lot of out of this tutorial. It's sorry, it's not the most polished. I'm I'm kind of under a time constraint here, but hopefully you have everything you need to uh, use this tool and that you're set up for success uh, in the future. As we develop this more and there there is more participation from the community we'll build out more tutorials and probably have a little bit more polished ones uh for you so anyway just i wanted to give a really really big shout out to the um cosmetic standardization project backroom because they obviously made this happen uh and this has been a dream of mine so the fact that it's come true is largely thanks to trip tech i have to give him a special shout out but i also have to give thanks to Lael to Meta Legacy, to Xenthos, and Egg Timer. They all were very helpful in getting this moving. A lot of them, in fact, really, most of them knew Blender way more than I did. So it was a lot of them teaching me how this kind of worked, and um, it was me building processes with TripTech and, and Lael, uh, you know, building things out in terms of processes and a lot of thought there, and Meta Legacy creating tutorials and and Zendos and Egg helping with implementation. So it's been very much a team effort, and I'm very excited to finally call this done and share it with you guys. All right, with that, I'll be signing off here, and I'll talk to you guys later.